Bahrain is the small island uh, in the southern part of the Persian Gulf, um, between, sandwiched between the peninsula of Qatar uh, and the mainland of Saudi Arabia. Um, uh, I've been traveling to uh, Bahrain for a number of years, uh, and the story of Bahrain um, is actually fairly straightforward and fairly simple. Uh, the reason why it's important now is that for the last year um, it has been caught up in what people think is the Arab Spring uh, in the Gulf. Uh, I don't think it is. Uh, I think what we're seeing in Bahrain uh, is in fact a, um, the, the rivalry being played out um, on a religious level between uh, uh, the Sunni Islam of Saudi Arabia and the Shiite Islam of Iran. Uh, and on an ethnic level between uh, the Arabs of the Middle East and the Persians of Iran. Uh, in the last year, uh, this, uh, or a year ago in March, uh, in fact it started in February, there were street demonstrations. Uh, by the mid-March, uh, the situation had got so potentially chaotic uh, that uh, Saudi forces uh, came to Bay of Bahrain across a causeway which uh, links the island with the mainland um, and uh, since then everything has been uh, rather tense. Um, the uh, image which you probably have of Bahrain is that the demonstrators back in February of March last year um, uh, were assembled around uh, the uh, something called the Pearl Roundabout uh, a traffic circle uh, just on the edge of the, the capital, Manama. Uh, after the uh, Saudis came in, uh, the Bahraini authorities bulldozed down uh, the Pearl Monument um, and uh, converted it from a, travel uh, uh, a traffic circle I into a junction. Uh, it is now called the Al Farouk Junction. Not that you can use it, it's the roadblocks all around it. Uh, and Al Farouk, of course, is a character uh, famous in Sunni Islam, in case uh, the Shiites of Bahrain didn't get the point. Um, I was amused that Rob started off his uh, talk uh, by referring to something he had written um, 25 or 27 years ago. Um, I can beat that. Uh, Several years ago, I wrote the following. In the past year or so, there have been several times when Bahrain must have seemed all too small and so vulnerable to events in what appears to be an increasingly unstable area. The reasons are several and often interconnecting. First, more than half the population are Shia Muslims, sharing the faith uh, of Iran. Second, they're ruled over by a an emir who is also a Sunni Muslim. Third, by virtue of its small size, Bahrain has to make sure uh, it has a good relationship with the big states of the region, Iran and Saudi Arabia. Uh, I wrote that in the Financial Times on November the 4th, 1980. Um, basically, it's a template uh, which uh, you can apply exactly today. Um, and um, it, I was there last week. I'd been there in September uh, of last year, and I'd been there in March last year as well. And essentially, uh, that's uh, uh, the way I look at it each time. And each time I go there, I try to see how uh, I have to modify uh, that template. Mm -hmm. um, it is a very sad uh, comment uh, to make that, uh, in fact, the template doesn't need much modification. Uh, and this is the dilemma. Uh, it's increasingly a dilemma uh, for the United States because Bahrain is a very important ally of the United States. Uh, it is where the headquarters of the Fifth Fleet uh, is. In uh, 1980, when I first went there, the, head, the actual headquarters uh, was a, um, uh, a, a ship um, permanently anchored offshore. 
these days it is buildings a group of buildings on the outskirts of manama but the so there is a long historical relationship between the two countries it's also a good relationship the United States Navy is very happy having a headquarters there I say a headquarters it's buildings and people and command it's not a dockyard it's not a home port if ships arrive they anchor or moor at a distant jetty you don't see American warships in Bahrain but the US Navy is is a crucial part of the strategic balance in the Persian Gulf ensuring that the energy security for the whole world is maintained by making sure that there's no disruption in the supply of oil and natural increasingly natural gas from the Persian Gulf some of which comes as far as the United States but most of which goes to Asia and particularly the economic powerhouses of China and India and also Japan and South Korea the problem is that the majority population of Bahrain has always been at a historic socio-economic disadvantage with the minority Sunni population and particularly the Sunni royal family political rights are also limited as well over the years a way round of this because there has been prosperity would have been to make sure that as the cake grew the Shiites managed to retain at least their portion of the cake unfortunately although I can't necessarily present the figures the general impression is that their slice the Shiite slice of the cake has in fact diminished I wrote in the Wall Street Journal a year ago in an op-ed that Bahrain gave the impression sometimes of being an institutionalized kleptocracy basically the Al Khalifa the ruling family have grown increasingly rich and have enjoyed becoming increasingly rich in the last year the Shiites have rebelled against this and the future of Bahrain is is the story of how this is readjusted whether it is by done by dialogue or persuasion outside persuasion whether it be Saudi persuasion Iranian persuasion or indeed American persuasion or whether there is an increasing chaos and revolution if there is revolution there I don't think it would be good for the people of Bahrain and it almost certainly won't be good for the people of the United States the particular challenges that we're facing or the particular things to look out for in the next few weeks is what happens to the Formula One I have never in my life taken an interest in motor racing which I've always regarded as a fairly pointless activity but I've realized that I actually have to squat up on motor racing and there are two reasons for doing this one of course the precise reason is that Bahrain has a Formula One Grand Prix due to take place on April 20th 21st and 22nd secondly it was cancelled last year because of the trouble so the big issue is will it take place this year and associated with this is that if it takes place it boosts Bahrain's economic respectability and revives an economy which has been hard hit by the troubles of last year and if it doesn't take place then we are 
potentially facing another downward spiral. Uh, Bahrain is one of these countries where the official media um, is outrageously sympathetic to the official government. Um, and so it's always curious to read the official media um, to see uh, what they're saying. Uh, and it's particularly amazing when they say something uh, which is, um, perhaps they hadn't realized, um, critical of the government. The Gulf Daily News, um, a colorful tabloid full of uh, uh, local advertisements, has uh, a headline in today's uh, edition, uh, which I've taken off the internet. The headline is Catastrophe Warning. And the first sentence is, Bahrain is facing an impending economic catastrophe unless action is taken to stop ongoing street violence, says, say, business leaders. Hundreds of jobs will be at risk, particularly among small and medium enterprises if the campaign of tire burning and Molotov cocktail attacks on police continues, they warned. And uh, this was uh, the business leaders of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, a, a perfectly respectable uh, group. Um, that is where we're heading. Um, do I have confidence uh, that we are um, uh, it's going to take place uh, and that we will turn a corner and uh, Washington will breathe a sigh of relief, enabling it to continue with its um, headquarters for the Fifth Fleet, um, uh, crucial at a time like this if we're pressuring uh, Iran um, not to develop a nuclear weapon. I'm not confident, uh, confident at all. Indeed, one perfectly respectable and very experienced observer said to me uh, that um, he was half expecting uh, that uh, the Formula One would not take place because there were elements in the royal family who would be pleased if it didn't take place because that put them at an advantage uh, to their rivals within the royal family. Um, this is absurd, it's crazy, and it's a real problem um, for the uh, United States.